and welcome to my channel. My name's Angela and this is Devon Thread Tales. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I am doing a special video with Karen from So Little Time and we're doing a collaboration all about the Tilling the Buttons Esty pattern. This is a pattern that I wasn't really sure I was drawn to if I'm absolutely honest and then I kept seeing versions of it and some I was kind of going mm, not sure and then others was going oh, I quite like that one <laughs> and so Karen and I we chat quite regularly and we said do you know what let's just go for it and let's just do this pattern we've done lots of collaborations in the past or well, I've seen lots we've done a few collaborations in the past and um we it's been a while since we've since we've done one we were going to do one about the um world again and we both made our versions of it but then we just never ended up sort of coordinating the video so it was a bit of a shame really so we thought right come on let's get on it and let's get these videos done so i have got on my sd today this is the only version i've made however i will be making more so i'm going to talk through a few of the things that i have felt about the pattern things that i've had to do to the pattern because i definitely had to change it for my body and my body shape for it to fit in a way that i felt comfortable um, but before I do that, I'm going to pass you over very quickly to Karen so you can see a sneak peek of hers. But once you've done that and once you've seen this video, please, please do go over and watch her video all about her SD, which she'll go into way more detail about in terms of her and her sizing and how it's worked for her. Hi Angela, hi everyone, I hope you're doing okay. Thank you very much for having me on your video today, Angela, and for collaborating with me on this pattern. So myself and Angela have decided to come together um, yet again to share with you our versions of the SD pattern by Tilly and the Buttons. And I have to say, we were a little bit skeptical about how this pattern was going to turn out because there had been so many fit issues with other people that had made it in the sewing community and also because we do have slightly different body shapes it was interesting to see how we were going to get on with it so it was nice to come together to have a go at making this because we both knew that we wanted to make this kind of set for the summer months um, although the weather has gone a bit hit and miss at the moment I am due to go on holiday this Friday um, so I will be taking my set with me because the weather is pretty mixed I think whilst we're away it's not going to be the heat wave that we had last year that's for sure but yes I am really pleased with how my set has turned out so I'm not going to go into too much detail on this video because I would really appreciate it if you would hop on over to my video so I can share my full review with you on there so I'm sure that Angela will be linking that in the description box below for you but basically I have made the um, high hip version of the top and I have used a crepe fabric that I already had in my stash which I bought a number of years ago from Stuart's Fabrics off the outside market in Leicester and it was a while ago so he probably hasn't got this anymore but it was a really nice fabric that I did use for a previous project actually and I have to say I've not really done that very often where I've used the same fabric for two different projects um, so when I first made this I wasn't sure if I liked it because it's not the same fit as what I made it in previously but um, yeah, now I've kind of finished the whole outfit, I am actually really, really pleased with it. So like I say, I've made the high hip version and I really like how the fit has turned out, um, but I do go into more detail about my fit um, on my video. I decided not to make the SD trousers to go with it purely because of time aspect I already had another trouser pattern already cut out that I thought would work really well for it and I have made the Friday pattern company Saguaro pants and I really like how the combination kind of works they are really similar I would say to the SD trousers so they are high-waisted elasticated in the waist as well and um, they are just slightly I think narrower in the leg um, so, which I do kind of prefer on me because it just balances me out a little bit but I shall pan you down so you can see how my top is looking so it's got quite a high neck Line, which I actually do really like it does give you the option to lengthen the straps if you wanted that slightly lower but do take into consideration that that will make the bust art sit in a different position um, mine isn't as blousy as some because I have used a smaller size and then these are my saguaro pants which have some pockets on the front here and it's got quite high waisted elasticated waist and then if I pan you down a little bit more you'll be able to see the width and length of the trousers so that's the width of them so they are quite wide legged but I don't think as wide as the SD and I did have to add just a slight little bit of length onto the bottom of mine because I am quite I'd say long in the body 
so my waist is probably a little bit higher um yeah i'm quite long in the in my torso i think so and i think um yeah that just makes the trousers slightly shorter but i do find that the rise on these is absolutely perfect for me so yeah i'm really happy with my combination and i'm really happy with the fabric and pattern combination as well it's nice to wear something monotone um so that i have you know something it's monochrome isn't it Mon monotone um so i have something that's a bit more dressier to wear out on an evening but it's equally just as great to wear out on everyday basis i have done the school run this morning in it and felt really quite nice so yeah that is my version but like i say please do hop on over to my video so you can hear in more detail about how i got on with the sizing and that kind of thing so thank you very much again angela for having me and take care everybody see you soon bye so I think you'll all agree her version is absolutely gorgeous and it's so funny because whenever we do some sort of collaboration together or when we have um, talked about patterns and things I'm very much a monochrome person although I do feel like I'm breaking out of that and I do feel like I do make more colourful things you'll see on the mannequin behind me I've got something bright green going on which I'm very excited about making um, but normally Karen is way more floral and colourful than what I am and I'm more um, monochrome and I decided I was going to make it in the SD in a, in a much more colourful fabric and Karen was making hers in a monochrome and then when it came to it I found this fabric in my stash and I thought oh no actually this is what I want to make <laughs> I want to make it in this so we've ended up both making something very monochrome so <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> so this is a fabric I'll talk about the fabric first this is a viscose fabric it's really lovely soft light drapey it's absolutely beautiful fabric um it was from Guthrie Garney I did get it quite some time ago but I don't know if it's still in their stock but they do have lots and lots of viscoses and they are absolutely gorgeous but I will either put a link to this particular fabric if they still have it and if they don't I'll put a link in just to their website and their viscose section so that you can go and have a little look so I decided on this fabric and then I decided that I was going to make a toile and let's just say I made several toiles <laughs> I have got a specific fabric I'll show you so the fabric that I've got is a kind of a calico that's how it's described on the internet I think I just got it from Amazon so it's nothing sort of special particularly but but it's white and I think calico is normally a lot thicker than this and is normally like a creamy very natural sort of color but it is just a cotton it's not particularly heavy and I feel like this is something that I could um, very easily make most garments out of and um, get an idea of the fit with so even if it's something like a trouser which is something I want to make soon as well then I will use this um, for a twirl and I have started getting into the habit of making twirls with pretty much everything that I make now because I had a run of bad luck where I had three or more items that I'd made and I'd spent a lot of time and a lot of love and dedication to making these items and they just didn't fit so I'm now although it's frustrating taking the time to make very basic twirls up so the first twirl that I made was a size four I think and the size four this is I've unpicked it so you won't be able to see it very well but you can see the basic makeup of the pattern um yeah it's I made it up it it fit but it was very wide across here this really gaped which I know lots of people have talked about this gaping kind of I'm doing that to sort of bring it in this gaping that ha happens here some people are bothered by it some people aren't bothered by it and actually it doesn't matter whatever works for you that's what's right for you but I didn't like it personally and I wanted to try and resolve it which ended up in me making a lot of twirls so I made the size four it didn't fit right the bust starts were in the wrong position oh it just was horrendous so horrendous that's that's a bit that's a bit of a strong statement it just wasn't right um so one of the things that I did was I actually lengthened I unpicked it all and I put on much longer straps and lengthened it all to bring it down so that it felt like it fitted a bit better but <clears throat> I showed Karen and she sort of said it's it's fine and it does fit better but it's not the look that it's meant to be the the, the neckline is meant to be very very high and she was absolutely right and even though it fitted 
better it still wasn't great and then the bus starts were all wrong as well and, and what have you so I then made it in a size three and that fitted better kind of fitted better across here but it was still quite big I wasn't sort of sure about it um and and I felt like it was too tight sort of across here so whereas this isn't really big and loose but it does feel fall quite nicely but it was sort of tight across here and I thought again it's not the look that the garment is going for I, it wasn't right so I was then in a little bit of a dilemma so and, and I didn't like the fact that this still was too big across here so what I ended up doing is I actually made a size two across here and went out to a size four from the bust downwards and I'm going to show you a little video in a moment of how I did that. I did that and ended up with another twelve which is totally unpicked so you can't see it here but a uh, totally unpicked and I, I made it up and it fitted so much nicer. This fitted really nicely across here. It fitted around the bust and it gave me enough room but my bust starts were not falling in the right place at all and because I had done it on this uh, calico type fabric I was able to mess around with it and what I did I put the toile on of the size two going out to a size four with the bust starts in the in the place that they had kept come up on on the pattern and once I was wearing it I don't know if you can be able to see this is quite funny with a felt tip pen I drew where the fullest part of my bust was with two dots so I sort of basically drew on my nipples <laughs> here and here then unpicked the whole thing unpicked the darts that I had put in placed this on the pattern piece or my pattern piece over the top and I drew on the pattern piece where my darts were so again I'm going to show you a video of how I've done that and basically I redrew the darts so that they were pointing towards the fullest part of my bust so they where are they now I'm trying to think where they are I can't feel them oh, there they are and um, so the the bust darts literally go like that and they are pointing towards the fullest part of my bust and they're about an inch to an inch and a half away from the fullest part of my bust which is to me now feels like it's completely correct so before I go on and talk about the trousers I'm going to show you the video on how I did all of that so here's the original pattern I got my pattern printed up from Fabuloso I'll put their details below in the description this is the front bodice now my size for reference my full bust is a size 36 my waist is a 30 and my hips are around a 38 I fall pretty much into a size four for all Tilly and the Buttons patterns so my original line should have been this one here the four that goes out here this is the front bodice part and with all the different um, twirls and things that I had done, this is how I ended up coming up with the um, size that I did. I traced the size two across the top of the neckline. I then followed the line down and instead of coming up to the size two, which is here, I actually came around and just brought this out until I reached the size four. So just sort of scooped it in a very natural line up to the size four. I then continued to trace the size four all the way down, including the size four bust dart, the size four around the um, sides of the body, and obviously the center fold is a center fold and doesn't adjust at all. So the only difference is that I came up and into the size two to bring it in across the neckline. I then did exactly the same for the back. I did the size two and I will flip the pattern around and show you that. So here's the back bodice. And again, I traced out the size two along the neck, down the arm side, but then continued it all the way along until I reached the size four, which is here. The two is here. So literally just bringing that out so that it then uh, created enough space and room around my bust and I continued with that line all the way down for the size four for the rest of the bodice so literally only the size two around the arm and the neckline for both the back and the front bodice I did exactly the same for the facings and I traced out the strap um, totally normally there was there was no alterations to the strap whatsoever so that's how I traced the original pattern piece for one of my twirls
So once I then decided that my pattern was right in terms of size, but that the dart wasn't in the correct place, this is my back bodice piece. I didn't change this at all. I kept that exactly the same. I then unpicked my calico that I had done. Now, unfortunately, I don't quite know how I've managed to do this, but this is actually not the original piece of calico that I use. I think this is for one of the other sizes that I had trialed and had gone wrong, but this is how I had done it. I had unpicked all of it, including the dart that was originally here. I don't know if you can very faintly see the original dart that was here. And this is the point at which my fullest part of my bust was when I had it on. I then took my front bodice piece and laid it over. This isn't going to be right because like I say, this isn't the right size, but I laid this over. So I'll take this away for a moment. Laid this over so that it was laying in exactly the right place. I then measured the original dart from the, the widest part of the dart to the point to see how long that line was. And I then drew a line from the widest part of the dart along to where the my fullest part of my bust was in line with that and then made sure the original length of this dart married up to the new dart and I literally just swizzled it around and that is a technical term I'm using swizzled <laughs> I swizzled it around I haven't changed how high up or down it is I'm sure there's probably different ways of doing this and probably better ways of doing this but this is how I did it so that it laid in the correct position to marry up to where my full bust um, was laying. So I hope that helps and I hope that you can see how I've made my alterations but please do come back to me and um, message me if you're unsure about anything that I've done or need help um, with me explaining it further. So I hope that helps explain how the bodice um, adjustments were done and um, how I got it to fit properly for me and I'm really pleased because it does mean that this is now laying really nice and flat Obviously, when I move around, look, you know, I'm moving around and it's doing that. But I think people were finding that even when they were standing still, that this was actually gaping a little bit. And I do feel like I've really got that um, fitting really quite nicely now. And I'm really happy with how that is and how, how it fits around the bust and around the rest of the body. So just for reference, I made the longest version. There are two different um, length versions that you can make. A slightly shorter one, I think it comes up about there, or this longer one. Um, it's not very long, so if you are worried about it be, um, coming untouched, then obviously you could always just add um, an inch or two onto it. I believe there are lengthened and shortened lines, so you could just do that very easily, or you could even just add a bit of length onto the bottom of it. I personally don't think that I would ever wear this other than tucked in and with the SD trousers it seems to work quite well. I know that Karen has a little bit of problem with hers coming out of her trousers and I don't know if that's because she's used a different style of pattern, I'm unsure, but I feel like this works quite well. You know, I'm lifting my arms up and it's not sort of coming out, sort of bending over and things and it does feel like it, it fits quite well. I like it slightly more tucked in than really blousing out, that's not really my style. I think it looks nicer sort of just with a little bit of blousing just a tiny bit and it really gives it that um, uh, jumpsuit kind of look now if you're not kind, uh, keen on these bits coming out what you can do is you can just pull the gather of where it's um, you know tucked in slightly more to the front so it gives you more of a sleep, uh, streamlined look here and it's you know, slightly more gathered at the front. I think that looks perfectly fine and perfectly nice. But yeah, I really like it. So on to the trousers and I decided I'd had quite enough of making twelves. <laughs> Even though I've said everything I've said about, you know, I don't want to make mistakes and all the rest of it. I knew these were such a relaxed pair of trousers and actually fitting them was probably gonna be okay. And I just, I put my big girl brave pants on and I just went for it and I made a size four without twirling them whatsoever. Oh, what a rebel I am. <laughs> anyway, I made a size four. I had debated going down a size so that there wasn't quite as much gathering and all that kind of thing. But in the end, I thought, no, I'm gonna play it safe and make the size four. 
and I'm so glad that I have. I've made them. I have made absolutely no alterations to them whatsoever. You'll probably see it more in the little bits of video that I've put in and pictures. But I feel like because they're in such a light, loose, floppy fabric that they just fall really nicely around the hips. So like I say, I'm around about a 38, between a 38 and 39. There's only sort of about an inch each side which probably you know two inches I suppose once you take the front and the back so four inches of ease but where that then falls all the way around your body I feel like that looks really nice they're super super comfy yes they're high-waisted my belly button is about there and they come right up to where my belly button is they sit nicely on the um, narrowest part of my waist they don't have any side seam pockets and I was a little bit gutted about that I'll talk to you about that in a second um, but they do have of these back pockets now I've put them in I think I could have probably got away with not putting them in at all because let's face it on this fabric you can't even tell that I've got pockets there but I just did it because the pattern said to and I like to do as I'm told <laughs> so I put the pockets in so other pockets side seam pockets I like to put a pocket in anything I possibly can. I love a pocket. I like to be able to stand and, you know, put my hands in my pockets. And I did very, very nearly not make the Estee trousers. I very nearly made a different style of trouser. I was going to possibly make um, the Saguaro Friday Pattern Company trousers because they have a pocket and it's not an inseam pocket, it's a slash pocket. And I really like the look of that. But I also wanted a quick and easy make and so I, I did this but knowing I'd probably be gutted that they didn't have pockets in. However, what I will say is that now that I've made this, I love the fact that it is really nice and streamlined down my hips. I don't have any bulking or any, you know, anything to take away that shape of the waist to the hip. There's nothing sort of adding bulk there. and. I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm just going to have to stand with my hands like that in my back pockets <laughs> or my hands on my hips or, you know, fiddle around with a bag or something. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm, I, I thought I'd be annoyed that there aren't any pockets and I haven't worn this very much yet because I like to save my items and not wear them until I've done a video. So I might have to report back later, maybe in one of my one week me made uh, videos, a report back and sort of say how I feel about the whole no pocket thing but at the moment I feel like it was a good choice and I'm really really happy with how they've they've come out so yeah so that that's my Estee trousers oh and I can't remember if I said but I didn't add any length to them my height I'm five foot six and the pattern piece that I've got here so this is the uh front leg piece and I uh, you can cut it here for the cropped version and this is the longer version and as you can see I haven't added any length to that whatsoever. To be honest I don't think I had enough fabric to be able to to add length anyway so it, it worked out well. Um, in terms of the amount of fabric that you need for the SD, I believe it says around about one meter of fabric for the top and two meters of fabric for the bottoms. And if you are making them separately, then I would say that is really quite a good um, estimate of the fabric. Um, but because I was making these together, you can then, you know, fiddle around and put bits and pieces here and there. So you could probably get away with a little bit less fabric than that. But I wouldn't want to quote how much fabric but I would say you could you could potentially get away with it and I hope so because I've actually only bought two and a half meters of fabric I bought another fabric to make another um set and the set that I'm going to make is in a plain totally plain black which I think will look really lovely just as a plain black outfit but I think because this has then got the black background, I could wear the black trousers with the white top and vice versa. And I've then got myself several different pairs of, oh, not so pairs, sorry, not several different pairs. I've got myself several different outfits and different looks by mixing and matching. And I think it's gonna work really well. And I had thought in my head, 
oh, I'll just make a different pair of trousers, but I think I'm gonna make exactly the same. It's such a quick and easy make, and I'm so delighted with how it's come out. Yes, this was a nuisance, and it was a real pain, but now that I've made it, I'm really pleased with how it's come out, and I'm really glad I took the time to really fuss over the fit and all the rest of it, because I think this is gonna be something that I wear quite a lot. I love the fact that it comes up quite high. The only thing I would say about the top and this is nothing to do with the pattern, this is just me and pattern placement, is I've noticed that this strap, I've obviously landed it on a really plain piece of fabric, and this one isn't. And I think that looks a bit weird. <laughs> and you probably didn't even notice it before, and now that's all you're gonna see, but I'm like, oh, I wish that was more patterned, because it is at the back, I think. Yeah, it is at the back, so a bit silly. Oh, and in terms of bra straps, obviously you probably just saw them. I have got a bra on. It does fit quite nicely under the bra straps. I think you can see it a little bit with a bit of movement, but on the whole, they do cover the bra straps. If you wanted to, you could always make the um, straps a little bit thicker, or you could wear a strapless bra as well. Um, I know that a few people have said they've had problems with the way that the straps are positioned and the notches on the pattern. I didn't find that. I found that mine fell perfectly in the in the right place. Um, so certainly that wasn't something I needed to adjust either. But I hope that you have found that um, video. <laughs> I can't talk properly now. I hope that you have found that video helpful. I hope that you've enjoyed seeing both mine and Karen's um, SD sets. Please, please do go over and see Karen and how she's got on with hers and what size she made and how that fits around her body shape, etc. It's been really great reviewing this pattern. I've absolutely loved it. There are going to be many more to come. I know that for sure. And I hope that you have a go at making the SD and you enjoy it too. So for now, I will say see you later. Have a good week and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.